Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Quinn Schofield, and this is Inspiration Tuesday. for joining us. Today we are going to talk about sports and in particular the world's greatest pastime, baseball, with our very special guest, Liz Banks, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Let's Play 2 and Founder and President 500 Home Run Club. Liz, welcome to Inspiration Tuesdays. How are you? And it's my pleasure being here today. Now, you know, Liz is internationally recognized in the sports industry, and especially with Major League Baseball. She's established the 500 Home Run Club, which is an internationally recognized organization founded to celebrate the awe-inspiring achievements of the greatest home run hitters of all time. Liz, what would you most like our viewers to know about you? Well, you know, during the pandemic, I've had to recreate or freshen up the brands, I'll put it that way. So it gives me a great emphasis on what's new, what's next. Because in some ways, we've all had to do that. Even if you're a simple housewife or you're the CEO of a company, we've all had to go through a transition during this pandemic. It's affected us worldwide. So during my, my, my uppets, because you know, you have to come and you, you're kind of, you're not cleaning out everything. What you're doing is trying to renew, regrow. And you know, it brings me to springtime. So that's exactly what you're doing when you begin to reinvent and you look to see what can I do to bring newness to what's around me? What can I do to bring enthusiasm, uh, freshness, excitement back? And things are beginning to return to normal, thank goodness, because of the vaccines. And certainly the world is taking a clear focus on each other. We're really caring about each other. So I think during this time, this has been my greatest joy. That is outstanding. Well, you know, you are so inspirational. You know, I'd like to understand why, why you are as, I guess, inspirational as you are. So let's begin at the beginning. When you were a child, was there an event or, or a, a program or a significant occurrence that specifically inspired you, Liz? Well, I am the oldest daughter of four. Uh, my parents are from the South. And when you're the oldest daughter, a lot of responsibility gets placed on you. And you don't even think about it because it's like breathing. So I think from an early age, that responsibility of having to be caregiver to my siblings. Um, and I also had wonderful extended family, grandmothers, great grandparents, uh, aunts and uncles. So I had a very, you know, my father was from a family of 17. My mother from a very small family of three. So we had a very broad family relationship. In the summers, we'd always travel to the South. Uh, it was a very full life. And in that, because I appreciated and I could see the elders, my elders, my great-grandfather, my great-grandmothers, my mother's mother. And my mother was smart enough to name me after both of my grandmothers. So that is where my name came from, my mother's mother and my father's mother. Through that, and being raised in that kind of nurturing environment. And my grandmother was sharing with me about their journey, their disappointments of not being able to get the education they wanted. My, my grandmother, my father's mother wanted to be a teacher. And my mother's mother just wanted to graduate from high school. And because of the time, the 20s, the 30s, the era, they weren't allowed to have a voice. 
We were not allowed to have a choice about a career and the very fundamental things that we all take so for granted now. So listening to them, hearing their, their stories, as well as my mother sometimes lamenting about her career and the things she wanted to do, it gave me a very strong sense that I needed to be educated. I needed to have a voice. And I needed to understand how power worked for all of us, not just the man, but the woman. And it made me determine to, 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 to go into my life and lovingly challenge myself for excellence. And I didn't do that in sports because I am not sports inclined at all. I mean, not at all. Not at all. Wow. Well, so, that, so that's another interesting story, how I ended up in sports uh, and only through Ernie because my life was not a life of sports at all. It was education, intellectual, books. So what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, communications, a talker, television, radio. So that's my early start. Um, you know, and communications. I loved it. It gave me a voice. It was also very interesting at the time because media was available, television. You didn't see that many images of Blacks in the media, in television. That my brother happened to be working at the Stock Exchange, the Chicago Mercantile Stock Exchange. And he invited me down to the floor. Very interesting place of power and money. So once again, that steered me away from communications and I got into commodities for a moment. So it, it also opened up the door for an entrepreneurship. My father had a Sinclair gas station. Uh, he also was a barber. He also worked on the railroad. So I'm saying I had, I had family members that were very entrenched into hard work and being very disciplined and responsible. So that was the background that I came out of. So how do you define success then? You know, in your youth, you define it by material things. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you know, it's, it's what car can you get? What, what house can you buy? Um, so certainly I, I, I say that money enhances your life, but true success is you being a good human being being a member of the planet, sharing, caring, making a difference while you're here, being a mentor to somebody. All those things are so important today and now. So that to me is a successful person, an unselfish person, a person that wakes up in the morning and thinks about others before they think about themselves. And that's also the lesson I hand to my daughter to tell her, what have you done today for someone else? What achievement are you the most proud of? For a very, very long time, I, I, I wished and wanted to be a mother. So I would hold that to the highest, the fact that I am a mother. Now, business accolades, they will always come because that is my life to be an entrepreneur. I still have one great big wish, and, and you know it, you and I have discussed it. And that's in bringing baseball to the Middle East. And I would love to do a major league exhibition game with my 500 home run club members and some retired major league baseball players. So I haven't achieved my great success yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. So t well, tell us about the home run club then, Liz. Well, I want to say that the 500 home run club, you know, was started. Babe Ruth was the first entry. Um, and then Hank Aaron broke that wonderful record. And then to be followed by our home run king today and now, which is Barry Bonds. So as I embrace the 500 home run club, and certainly my husband Ernie Banks is one of the members with 512 home runs, I also embrace the 600 home run club, which also holds Willie Mays and Sammy Sosa, I embrace that 700 home run club. And I just mentioned the illustrious people that are there. 
as well as the 800 home run club with some Negro League baseball players in it. So I want to say it's a celebration of all of the top athletes in baseball with an exclusive record. The newest one to join is David Ortiz. So this club is a very difficult club to get into. And I look forward to us entering in new members. I love the fact that baseball will be forever new by the members, by the men from the past, the present, and the future. So what inspired you to start the Home Run Club? Ernie played a big deal in that after we were married. Certainly I, I was seeing a lot more baseball games. Uh, I was PV to also being a part of going to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And that is also one of uh, our members that endorses the 500 Home Run Club, as well as Major League Baseball, as well as the Negro League Baseball Museum. So through going through all of these organizations, there was one gentleman who owned the rights to the 500 Home Run Club. He had become frustrated and saying that it was sometimes difficult for him to get all of the members to work together. And uh, he wanted to close it down. So Ernie says, no, don't do that. He says, my wife Liz, she'll take it. <laughs> so that in essence is how I gained the rights to the 500 Home Run Club. And through that, it was very easy for me to work with the men because they already had a relationship with me through Ernie. So it was just an extension of love, an extension of the men who I already held in my heart in high esteem. And it's also a thing of love. How many members are in the Home Run Club now? 27. We have 27 members in the Home Run Club. Excuse me. All living? As I said, Ortiz is the newest member. And Albert Pujols is the only member that is currently playing. So out of all the members, Albert is the only one today and now that's still on the field. Now, Liz, is there a website that we can visit um, for more information about the exhibition game? Absolutely. We are working on updating the website, and that information should be up in 90 days. So All I'm right. happy to share it with you. Thank you for being a guest on Inspiration Tuesdays. Your passion for baseball is very contagious, and we hope to see an exhibition game here in the region in the very near future. This is Kim Schofield. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, be well, and go forth and inspire.